So here's a question to review and to find some characteristics of uh, trig graphs. So here's a bunch of uh, functions, uh, trig functions, and I want to figure out the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. So this is the base of function up here at the top that I've written out. Uh, and so A has a transformation, so does B, so does C, so does D. Um, and each one of them give me different things. To figure out the amplitude, it's always just the um, absolute value of A. So whatever number's out front, uh, that's what the amplitude is. To figure out the period, you go 2 pi divided by B. That'll give you the period. And to get the phase shift, you take C and divide it by B. And that'll tell you the phase shift. Um, Amplitude, again, is uh, from a midline, <coughs> how high up the graph goes or how, high de or how low, <coughs> low it goes. Uh, period is how long it takes the graph to repeat. So if it starts there, how long before it starts again. And the phase shift is taking a graph and shifting it over a bit. So how much do we shift it? All right, I'll just do a couple of them. Say this uh, first one, number 11. So number 11, it asks me for the amplitude. The number up front here is a 1. And so my amplitude is the absolute value of 1, which is just 1. The period I get from taking 2 pi and dividing it by whatever b is. Here's b right there. So it's 2 pi divided by negative 1 half. Now that's a little tricky to do. What I, what I typically do is I go 2 pi divided by 1 half or uh, 2 pi times by 2 over 1, because if you're dividing fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal, and then 2 pi times 2 would be 4 pi. Okay, so that would be the period uh, for that graph. Uh, phase shift is how far it moves left or right, and that's C over B, so C over B. So C, oh, there's nothing in there. There's, there's nothing beside that x there. So that would be, c would be 0. And b is negative 1 half. But anything divided by negative <coughs> 1 half is going to be 0. So my phase shift for that graph is 0. Now, if they uh, want you to graph that, I think they do ask to uh, graph the function, which we could do. I'll just do it over here. And you, you can do the same thing with all of these. So to graph it, um, typically the coast graph starts at 1. I'll just draw the basic one. And it b ends back up at 1 at 2 pi. So at pi, it reaches its lowest point, which is negative 1. And it goes through the axis halfway in between. So the graph will look something like That's the basic one. So that's just, this one is just uh, y is equal to cos x. So if I have to apply this transformation to it, um, the amplitude it still stays 1, so the distance up is still going to be 1. Uh, the period is different, though. The period is 4 pi. That means it's longer for that graph to repeat itself. So, um, I guess, where would that go? I'm, I might need to uh, move my graph over a bit. Um, because I'd have to extend that way over here. I wonder if I can do that. Oh, I can. Hey, that's sort of neat. So, uh, I'll extend this over to about 4 pi over there. So, if I wanted to graph this one. So, uh, now there's a couple things here. So there's a 4 pi. Notice that I did, I sort of disregarded the negative sign there, uh, and that's because the uh, uh, is just how long it takes to repeat something, and positive and negative doesn't really impact that, and so um, I did I sort of disregarded that that negative sign. I guess I could put an absolute value in front of that thing, but the negative does play a role because that negative in that spot tells me that the graph reflects on the y-axis. So instead of starting and going that way, you can think of it as starting there and going that way. But 
Um, if it's going to go this way, I guess I've got to go a, a bunch over here. So this would be negative 2 pi, and we'll put the negative 4 pi over here. So um, it's not moving any left or right, and the amplitude's still 1, so I'm still starting at this point. But I have to do this whole thing here, uh, stretch it out so it happens in 4 pi. So it needs to hit the bottom at 2 pi. And so it's probably going to go through here at pi. And it'll also go through here at uh, 3 pi. So the graph, the, this new graph, uh, so this one that I had was y equals cos x. But this one is going to be like that. Okay, so the amplitude stays at 1, 1. But now, do you see how it's stretched out? And it's stretched out because of um, the period. So the period's 4 pi instead of just 2 pi. I was just thinking with that negative sign, I guess you could think if the period is negative 4 pi, that that means instead of starting and going right, you start and go left. You could think that way. Okay, so all the rest of the questions on here, will you'll do the same uh, kind of each kind of thing for each one. Uh, figure out the amplitude using that formula, figure out the period using that one, and figure out the phase shift using that one. And then you can, simple ones, like if there's only one transformation, you can graph them on your own. But I'd, I'd also use your graphing calculator or Desmos and graph those and just to see, confirm what you're thinking uh, that you'll see. Like for example, in this question, uh, I looked at this, and that 2 there means um, that the graph is going to get squished. So rather than going long like this one, it would be it would be squished up more like that. Um, this tells me that the graph moves to the right a bit, and this tells me that it's half as high as usual. So instead of going all the way up there, it would be like that. So it would be coming half as high with all those other transformations too. I hope you have a question.